so yes, uh, this, this gentleman right here is Dan. He's going to be a New Jerseyan. And uh, the snow was not as bad as they I know. They, they always I had a free time watching CNN last night and watching them just, they were live for like six hours and they had Anderson Cooper on the roof in New York City. They had reporters in every major city on the Eastern Seaboard standing out going, yeah, it's snowing. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's still snowing. Oh, did you look at the weather channel? They were like, oh my God, that is there. Stock up on food. Like, feet. Once they finally let poor Anderson Cooper go home, they brought in Don fucking Lemon. Who's a joke? Don fucking Lemon is riding around in an SUV with a GoPro in it. That they and they have it on there. The Blizzard Mobile, and he's just driving around like Times Square. And it's like, yep, snowing. A fucking es Escalade, being like, yes, yeah, snowing. We want you to. We want to urge that you not be on the road. What did they think was going to fucking happen? Like nuclear fallout or some shit? Well, to be fair, in a city like New York, had they actually gotten the two feet of snow that were expected, it is a big deal. It's not catastrophic. We know how to deal with it. But they need people off the road so that they can remove all that snow so that they can keep things moving, so that they can clean out everything. Yeah, but it's... In a city like Manhattan... Like, it, there's nowhere for all that snow to go. But it's not the disaster. It was not like, oh, my God, we're all going to die. No, it can be. Last year, when the new mayor first came to term, we had a big blizzard, and they didn't prepare for it. And he caught so much shit because they were underprepared. It did cripple the city for, like, a week. It was a huge problem. So I don't really blame them for over-preparing. Yeah, but this time... The media kind of made too big a deal of it. I don't blame the city of New York for closing shit down and over-preparing. Because it's better to over-prepare than under-prepare. But the media was just... There's still... Anderson Cooper was out on the roof in New York City tonight. It's not snowing. Nothing's happening in New York. It's just like... It's like 15 degrees out. But yeah, Anderson but... Cooper's out there like, so it snowed. This... You, you like, were like watching the news stations like every, and like... Coming up after the commercial, we'll tell you how to kill and prepare your pets for food just in case you're snowed in. After that, we'll tell you how to skin your children. I'm like, Andy, Andy, go inside. <gasps> I have to show you something. Oh, God, what? Oh, my God, you're going to hate it so much. <laughs> I got an early Valentine's Day present. What the hell is that? It's a hippo. Of course, yes. That kind of standard issue for you. I yes. like big hugs. I cannot lie. Never let a hug pass me by. You can give high fives or cuddles, but please don't do those hugs. Those gentlemen, ladies, they're not going to do those aren't you pretty? Please just give me a big old squeeze. We have found disembodied orgasm hippo abroad. I, I couldn't really give them a shot. She dances. Stand out for me. What? Do you like it? Where are my headache pills? That's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I put it on Instagram and Twitter if you didn't get a good enough look. Oh, I didn't see it on there. Yeah. Why would you do that? She sings a Baby Got Back parody about hugs. She's a hippo. It's an idea whose time has come. We were, we were in the mall yesterday and he spotted it like we were like all the way across from the hallmark and he's like there's a giant valentine's hippo in there of course he did he had to go get it if i had to it's like oh this will annoy the fuck out of nash we did consider that yeah. and i'm gonna be honest with you when i put it on instagram and twitter i got at least three replies saying that I got a couple of people that were like, Nash is going to hate it. My fucking audience. So, 
shall we get down to it then? Let's do it. Oh, for God's sake. Why do they make us? Oh, I'm getting Instagram alerts now. People are like looking at it. Here we go. Each week, Catherine goes out in the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible things, brings it back to us in a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? Oh, and the Radio Day their audience as well. Should note that. And uh, this week, so we had the, uh, the Miss Universe contest. Really? Did that happen? Yes. I haven't followed those things in so long. It was it was really weird to because on my Twitter feed both the Miss Universe and the WWE Royal Rumble were going on at the same time and I was having trouble trying to figure out which tweet tweets went to what. My tweet my Twitter feed last night was all people bitching about snow and the Royal Rumble and that was a strange those were strange bedfellows. Well the uh... and then me like live tweeting making fun of CNN's coverage. Well, the uh, the uh, the Royal Rumble and the uh, Miss Universe seem to have unintentionally collided. Costa Rica Miss Universe contestant encourages widespread anarchy after defeat. Moments after failing to reach the final round of the Miss Universe competition, Costa Rica's Karina Ramos urges destabilization, government overthrow on Twitter. Got the story up on the screen here. You all, you guys all I'm see it. I'm leaving at the wrong camera. Hi. You guys all see it. Tons of people sent me this story. Tons and tons and tons. About how she went on uh, Twitter saying down with judges, down with America, down with democracy. Tons and tons of people. Down with democracy. Yeah. Because she's not Miss Universe. Yeah. You know what's wrong with this story? Is it true? It's a fake. After last week, I started the show off explaining your stringent journalistic integrity. Very simple tips and ways on how to spot a fake story. Easy ways of doing it. And yet, 10 emails, this, this fucking story. So, Miss Costa Rica does not want to overthrow democracy? She does not. Well, that's good. That's good, but guys... Don't get fooled by these things. This What happens is someone will send you this story in your Facebook and you go, Oh my God! And you share it with 20 other people. And nobody stops to look where it's coming from, what it's related to. Nobody. Maybe they're counting on you. Maybe maybe they're sending it to you to fact check. Well, you know what? You you're, can... you're, the new, you're the new fact check.org. You know, you can do that shit yourself, though. Right, but why? Just make me do the shit? Yeah. It's like when people tweet at me, I don't understand that reference. Why should they Google it when they could make me Google it for them? Well, what makes it worse is after this story went viral, um, the Miss Costa Rica... The, the Costa Rica Miss Universe contestant started getting threatening messages on Twitter. Of course you did, because America! Because both bunches of people took this as fact and ran with it without doing one simple Google search to find out if it was true or not. Googling is hard. Yelling is easy. <sighs> well, in any event, it's... Uh, we're still picking up the noise from that computer. Oh, because I have it close to there, I guess. Oh, oh God, I just, all right. Is that better? Yeah, it's a little better now. I take it away from the computer, I just, you know. No, now it's, well, it's worse. Now it's worse. Now Warm. it's better. All right, so we have to keep it over here. And I have to be at a really unflattering angle unless I just let my arm fall asleep. Don't do that. But now we can hear the computer again. Okay. Well, maybe if I push the computer away, <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> oh, the editing I'll have to do this week. We should just change the name of the bit to technical difficulties. Yes. Yeah. That, that's that. Yeah. Uh, 
It's like the honest trailers for Avengers. Real as Tony Stark fixes an engine for 20 minutes. We watch Nash and Tara try to make Skype work for oh. half an hour every week. Here's an actual story that happened this week. And last week, do you remember the, I, I think it was last week, where they, the uh, car chase happened, the police stopped the car, and the woman ran away and left her baby in the vehicle. Yeah. And we said, don't do that. Mm -mm, don't do that. More people need to watch my show. Woman leaves baby in taxi while robbing store. Oh, not my face again. Shit. Wait, do I right click? <laughs> yes, right click. My mouse has one big button. <laughs> one giant shiny candy like button. Thank you. Welcome. Wilmington, Delaware. A woman robbed a Delaware convenience store at gunpoint Tuesday while her one year old daughter and an acquaintance were in a waiting taxi. In and a taxi? Don't in a taxi! taxi. <laughs> Amanda Paletti, 29, of Wilmington, Delaware, was arrested after police tracked down the taxi and its driver, who was unaware that her quick stop at a Wawa was an armed robbery. They robbed a Wawa! Don't do that. Wawa's a nice place. It police the address where she was dropped off afterward. Yeah, see, the thing, don't... Don't make a taxi driver have to be your accomplice. They're just a poor schmuck trying to earn a living. They're not going to do it. Also, you have to tell them where you live. Yes. And that's not yes. And don't leave your baby in the car while you commit a felony. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, the incident occurred shortly before 3.30 a.m. Tuesday. Um... Paoletti pointed a handgun at a 19 year old woman at the counter and demanded cash. The clerk gave her an unclosed amount, disclosed amount from the register. The Wawa employee uh, told the police the woman fled in a dark colored boxy style minivan cab. Uh, Paoletti left her baby with an acquaintance in the cab during the arb robbery. When the police went to where the cab driver dropped them off, they learned the acquaintance, who owns the house where she lives, had no knowledge of what she was doing. So she gets out. She's like, I'll be right back. Watch the baby. <laughs> Sorry. Runs in. Robs the Wawa. Runs back out. It's like, go, 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 go. What happened? Nothing. This is some Raising Arizona shit going on here. Yeah. Hang on. I just got to pick up some things. Illegally. Like with gun. Yeah, like, you know, money and uh maybe a felony. Maybe maybe a slim jim. And what of course when they searched her house, they discovered cocaine and drug paraphernalia. Wait, cocaine does cocaine not count as drug paraphernalia? No, cocaine is drugs. Drug paraphernalia are pipes, roach oh, clips, okay. razors. Little CD cases you use to chop that shit up really fine. You got to chop it up fine because you don't want to get the rocks in your nose. What do you use CD cases for? That's it's a, it's a nice, flat, smooth surface you put the drugs on and you chop it up with the razor and then you put it in a nice little line and you roll up a dollar. And not that I know anything about that. Okay. <laughs> I know nothing about what I'm talking right now. Having never snorted anything in my life, I, I have no idea. My mother was a substance abuse counselor. I never had a desire to do drugs. Yeah, you knew all the horror stories. You knew exactly what we were. I met my mom at her job for lunch one time, and I was like, never doing drugs. Nope, nope. Took one look at that waiting room, and the poor heroin addict's trying so hard to kick it, and you're like, nope, I'm good. I'll just drink myself into a stupor. But that's not the uh, the only bad parent we have this week. Um, at least that one apparently cared. She cared enough about her child to leave her in someone's capable hand. She actually gave a shit. This guy, on the other hand, um, wow, if there is a more Southern story than this, and it didn't happen in the South, which is amazing. Really? <laughs> 
Man traded his dog for gun to shoot his son. Isn't that a Kenny Chesney song? <laughs> Authorities say a man charged with being a convicted felon in possession of a firearm was sentenced Wednesday. Bill Douglas Thorne, 58, received a prison sentence of 21 years federal prison. Authorities say Thorne traded his dog for a 22 caliber rifle, a 22 caliber rifle that they intended to use to shoot his son. Thorne had others hide a gun in the Mason City Park, but it was turned over to police when he was arrested on harassment charges. Thorne had been convicted in 1997 of five counts of burglary and one count of armed burglary. Do I feel bad for his dog or his son? <laughs> Blues. Because he traded the dog for a gun, but he was going to kill his kid. Blues the clues got probably dark. probably gone to yeah. a better home. Dog's probably better off. He traded his dog. Yeah, somebody's like, Doge Coin. that's not how Doge Coin works. <laughs> That's not how you don't. It's not involved actual dogs. Much gun, many bullets. This is like you. You watch. I think you got the ending of Old Yeller wrong. Aww. <laughs> what? It was there. I, mean, I think the dog is the winner in this story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's probably being cared for better wherever wherever he is. You don't give the dog the gun and have him take your kid out back and shoot him. That's not how this works. Well, no, he gave away the dog. The dog isn't shooting oh. anybody. Why would you... This is such a plan. I mean, you gotta imagine the judge is like, oh my god. Why was he going to shoot his own son? He doesn't say! There's I, a... I feel like that's a question this story needs you to You know what else the story doesn't say? How old his son is. Yeah. He could be like 23 or 24, or he could be like 10 maybe. Wow, my Instagram is lighting up. Did yeah. he not take out the trash or something? How old the son is, why he was going to shoot his own son. Well, the boy ain't no good at t-ball. You know what has to be done. Why he lacked the means to acquire a gun in a financial transaction and oh. had to trade his dog. Well, he was a felon, so he's not allowed to buy firearms. Oh, so he has to barter. <laughs> Apparently. And do you gotta get back? What's the what's the 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 back and forth? What's the barter session for that like? What kind of a dog? What kind of a dog would you have to trade for a twenty-two caliber rifle? <laughs> why are you asking Dan? Why are you asking me? I just said that. Why are you asking him? He doesn't fucking know. Because he's a hillbilly from Missouri. I don't know anything about twenty-two caliber rifles. It's got to be like the black powder guns, you know, that you've got to. And he was in the army. The ramrod in and. What kind of dog would you have to trade for that? A good bird dog. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it was a good bird dog. We have it from the expert. It's like this is like a twisted sequel to Where the Red Fern Grows. I swear. For that, in some subtle way later. No, oh, gonna be so subtle. Ah. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Well. Let's move away from there to our nation's capital, where I just was this past week, which, which this makes me feel so safe and secure, I gotta say. Did you post a picture of a bottle of urine in an elevator? That was a bottle. It was a, I don't know what was in the bottle. It's a twister. It was in the elevator that somebody, it was at MAGFest. Someone left this Tropicana twister bottle in the elevator. And the only thing was, that label was like for a juice that should be red. And what was in the bottle was a murky yellow. Well, do they, they don't even make Tropicana Twister anymore, do they? That's an, I don't know. I don't think they make that anymore. All I know is that was yeah. the, that was the wrong color and nobody on the, on any, that thing just stayed on the elevator. Nobody wanted to touch the fucking thing. So Howard Hughes was at MAGFest? <laughs> nice. So this next one, um, are, are you aware of these little remote control drones that are becoming a big deal now? Yes, my brother-in-law actually got a remote control helicopter for Christmas and lost it within three hours. <laughs> and then he posted to Facebook asking if anybody in his local area <laughs> this little helicopter crash and they asked, could they please bring it back? And I'm the goddamn hillbilly. <laughs> so, well, yeah. 
Was he drunk when he was doing it? No. And? And he wasn't at the White House either. <laughs> yeah, did he end up crashing it into the White House? He did not. Trunk and spy satellite agency employee crashed drone on White House lawn. And that's what cracks me up, is it's a fucking a spy. This is, this. Uh, he was of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. He was off duty. He got drunk. His friend, yeah, the, the um, yet unnamed employee, reported the incident to his superiors at the NGA. He claimed to have been drinking at an apartment near the White House when he decided early morning to fly a friend's new DJI Phantom drone. He claimed he then lost control of the gr drone soon after the drone slipped unnoticed over the White House fence before it, was, at the White House fence. <laughs> before it was spotted flying low over the grounds and crashed into a tree. Apparently, you can just roll up on the <laughs> now knock on the front door and be like, "Yo, Barry, yo, Shelly, trick or treat." <laughs> Nobody will stop you. Now this maybe is maybe Bo, maybe the dog will bark at you. No, this is the thing. All right, apparently, according to the story, the White House does have a radar system for detecting aerial threats. You'd like to think, except drones appear on radar no bigger than perhaps a large bird. So they can't tell the difference. So it's entirely possible at the present day and time, if someone were so inclined to strap a couple... Don't finish that sentence. We're there you go. There you go. You could strap some C4 to a drone and then we're going to... Yeah, you could do that shit. You could totally do that. I don't know him. Wrong number. <laughs> Prank caller, Where prank caller. I don't know you. <laughs> I love America. I don't know. And the fact is, this is a guy who's in charge of helping keep the nation safe. And he ends up making it abundantly clear, we have a huge security hole. I'm not sure I buy this drunken mishap story. <laughs> you, what, you think he was on a dare or some shit? No, I think maybe they were spying on the White House. I think there was some X Files conspiracy shit going on. You and don't, and they're like, "Oh, we were drunk, and you, yeah, that's you, what happened." You don't spy on the White House with the DJ, DJI Phantom. Uh, do you know what that is? That's the beauty of it. It looks so stupid <laughs> that their that their oh shit hail mary pass worked. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Oh God. <laughs> this was some cigarette smoking man shit, I'm telling you. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Well, longtime viewers of the show will know we have a special place in our heart for practice called snow dicking. Snow dicking across the universe. This is where you, you, you wait for it to snow really, really hard. Huh. And you go outside and you build a giant penis. Not a small one. You build one to the heavens. You build a leaning tower of penis. Would you would you say that you erect? You tower? would! You would erect a leaning tower of penis, exactly. Well, you know, these kids in this next story are kind of my heroes. Do you want to build a snow dick? Come on, let's go outside. <laughs> well, these kids, this is from uh, Texas Tech University. Giant snow penis demolished at Texas Tech University as students protest. Did they really protest this? A group of mostly male students at Texas Tech University staged a heroic last stand before a bulldozer demolished their beloved snow sculpture of a giant penis. Is the, that Deadpool's dick? Because it's kind of lumpy. <laughs> well, it wasn't. It kind of, it started off better, but, you know. Uh, the 11 foot tall sculpture built in... Yeah, I had a nickel for every time a man said that to me. Ah. Uh, uh -huh. 11 foot tall sculpture. The saddest looking dick I've ever seen. <laughs> There's a mournful dick. <laughs> Want to go outside and build a little casket for it. That is a lumpy, diseased dick. 
The sad. Uh, the 11 foot tall sculpture built in one of the most popular places on campus took about four hours and up to 10 students to complete before the students could add their finishing touches to the sculpture. University workers in a bulldozer arrived to demolish it. Students began pouring water on the sculpture in a futile attempt to solidify it. To make it an ice dick. After a brief standoff between workers and students who posed the sculpture and hugged it, while others took photos, the sculpture was destroyed in, quote, possible, possibly the most brutal way possible. Let's, let's look at some of these pictures here. Here comes the, here's the bulldozer. Oh, no, it's in, oh, oh, I felt that. Oh, down it goes. In slow motion. Oh, smash the head. That is, that is on, that is some, whole, that is some Freudian shit going on there. It like circumcised it first. <laughs> oh, and here's, oh, we have the video. We got video. Here it comes. There's the there's the bulldozer coming. Why didn't they just build a giant snow vulva next to it? Look at them. They're heroically standing in the way of the bulldozer. Actually, I know why they didn't. Because some jackass would try and climb inside and get stuck like that dude. <laughs> Here it comes. No, hell no, we won't go. Hell no, we won't go. And oh no. Here, here, here it comes. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I do feel it necessary to note that when the bulldozer slams down on that dick, it does explode. Oh! Spray of white stuff in every direction. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like crossing my legs right now for some reason. I kind of want a cigarette. <laughs> Your, your beauty dick cannot stand up to the power of the bulldozer. You are all of you beneath me. <laughs> you These are just kind of cold. <laughs> oh. Oh, college. Speaking of oh, college, um. So we've had we've uh had conventions where shit has gotten a little rowdy every At now and again. At least nobody got their tongue stuck to it. Wouldn't that have been magical? Eh, you guys, come back, come back, you guys. The bell rang. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had conventions where shit has gotten kind of rowdy and crazy before. You know, we 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 we, we drive by. We had the drive by, yes. But normally, us at the convention, I can't recall any incidents of us larpers, gamers causing any significant issues to the structure of the hotel itself. Can you? No, we did piss off the crown prince of Saudi Arabia that one time. Yeah, but... And I know. think he's the king now. Yeah, he, he is, because his dad's dead. Um, yeah, we pissed that guy off so bad. They had the, the first thing he's going to do, those vampire LARPers. The vampires. I, I don't want know why he's German. I want you to find them and kill them. Is he Liam Neeson? So, well, we never caused that much. I have never been to a convention that has ever caused damage to a hotel. However, University of Michigan fraternity. Well, there's your answer. Yeah, there we go. Um, University of Mich Michigan fraternity goes full animal house. And I don't know how well you can see this here. I'm going to try and get some better pictures. Look at this shit. It's like The Shining is composed by Salvador Dali. What you're seeing here on the left, that hallway, they pulled up the carpet. That's what all that, that cracked up stuff, That's that's that was the molding that was holding the carpet. Yeah. They pulled the carpet out of the hallway. Why? Uh, fraternity, Sigma Alpha Mu trashed a ski resort in Central Michigan, creating $50,000 in damages. Fraternity left its rooms at Treetop Resort with broken furniture, solo cups, and trash strewn over the hallways and rooms. There were enough foreign fluids that a hazmat team was oh, called in. 
We had a group of, of a fraternity that was visiting, had excessive party and did damage to the resort. Food, beer, alcohol, the walls, carpet damage, ceiling broken down, and furniture damage. That is series of rooms, a couple floors of rooms. Obviously, things get out of hand. We estimate the cleanup and damage at around $50,000. So, they did a reenactment of the Sochi Olympics. <laughs> nice. Just, what the... What the fuck? That's some fucking party. How does this happen? Beer. No, I've never been that drunk. I I have not done damage to any property ever. Ever. I damaged property while drunk. I've assaulted people while drunk. I mean, can you think back to the conventions we've been to and how drunk people people have gotten insanely drunk at some of these cons. Yeah. Like Fucking in the stairwells drunk. Mm. Like fucking in other people's pickup trucks in in the parking lot drunk. You didn't hear about that one? No. We, there was a con once and... Was it the pickup truck of someone they knew? No, it was someone else random at the... They were just fucking in some random person's pickup truck. The bed oh, of the pickup truck. Okay. That's not okay. <laughs> See, when, when gamers... This says something about gamers. When we get drunk, we fuck. Sexually active fan geek. We'll fuck whatever, wherever. We don't give a shit. We'll fuck. There are so many children of friends we know who their birthday is precisely nine months after a con. It's true. It's well, true. The sad part about those child's lives is what they don't know is they weren't conceived. They were conceived in character. Because <laughs> you can't really cross your fingers. Oh, Lord Vladimir Stupenstein. Because you can't be in the middle. Because when you go out of character in the LARP, you cross your fingers. It's really hard to hold your fingers crossed the whole time yeah. while you're having. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, but no, we, we totally know people who have had sex in character. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, we do. We do. But all right, so we get drunk and fuck. They get drunk and destroy things. White people, man. <laughs> this okay. We're gonna get controversial <clears throat> up in here for a minute. Okay. When Ferguson happened. And half my fucking Facebook feed was like, well, you know, they're just acting like animals and destroying things and rioting doesn't solve anything. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, they should riot over the really worthy shit that white people riot over, like when our sports team wins. Or pumpkins. Or pumpkins. White people. Riot. If, you're, if you must throw a fucking riot, at least pretend it's for a reason that matters, not because beer. Not because your fucking sports team won. Why are you riding when they won? That doesn't even make sense. The answer is white people. Fucking white people. And you have to understand, I'm actually a little impressed by this. Because... I mean, whole carpet without anybody noticing. And doing it while drunk. That's the... noticing. I, I, I can... I went out, we're in a hotel. I went out to get ice today. And the maid, like, waved me down because I passed the ice machine to redirect me. <laughs> How did... No, no, yeah. it's that way. I'm like, oh, hey, thanks. How... Did... Oh, wait, somebody moving around a hotel. And how could they do this drunk? Have you tried to do any sort of manual labor drunk? What's manual labor? <laughs> I mean, fuck's sakes. I, I have tried editing videos drunk before. It doesn't work very well. It just, it doesn't. Things get weird. I can't even imagine trying to do, like, re remove carpet. It's like the worst episode of this old house ever. Well, and carpet staples are sharp as fuck. Because my, my room, when I was a teenager, the carpet came up in the corner and I stepped on one of the staples. Holy shit. 
carpet stables. Let's see. What other shit did they do fuck. here? What other shit did they do? Yeah, well, they... I seriously get every single one of them a tetanus shot just on precaution. This looks like... This looks and like a crap... A and a hazmat team, probably a lot of other shots as well. Some of these pictures, they look like they've turned the room into a crack den. They might have. Because there's, there's, like, just garbage everywhere. And this was one weekend. How did they do that in one weekend? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. But don't worry, everybody. The fraternity will go through the Greek life judiciary process and have oh, to pay wow. out damages. Thank yeah. God. Yeah, it's not like... We don't have to get those police type people involved. We'll just, we'll handle this with the Greek life judiciary. That sounds like a fucking uh, life insurance policy. Greek life judiciary. That means they're not going to get to participate in the spring fling. I kind of have attitude about the Greek system. Um, it... Robot house! Anyway, Futurama. Hmm? Futurama reference. Oh. You don't I've watch... seen a couple of episodes of that. <laughs> Do you know, Doom was on last night. Doom with Carl Urban? Yeah. And the... Dan, Dan had never seen it. It was on at like one in the morning. I'm like, oh, we're staying the fuck up. <laughs> I can't believe you haven't seen this movie. We gotta watch this fucking movie. And Rosamund Pike is in it. And I'm like, that bitch is up for an Oscar this year. <laughs> Little do people know, not too long ago, she was in Doom as Carl Urban's twin sister. The first thing we've learned tonight, that if you're going to destroy property, it helps to be white. Yeah, yeah, it does. <clears throat> but we... just, but white, just white people stop it. Just Stop it. We've learned that, uh... We're gonna find out it's in, like, an all-Asian frat, and people are gonna, like, come down on us so hard. We've learned that, um... Building a giant dick... is not always something everyone wants to be a part of. Even though they should. Not everybody wants to see your snow dick. <laughs> We've learned Nobody that... Nobody wants to see your dick. Some people don't want to see your snow dick. Especially if it's lumpy. Craftsmanship. We've learned that um, uh, the White House is terrifyingly insecure. I mean, shit, people. That's, that's fucking scary. Yeah. We've learned that... You can trade your dog for a gun, but you're probably not going to keep it. The dog or the gun? The gun. The gun. Just... We've learned that if you went to go, you really need to rob the Wawa, a babysitter is a better idea than leaving your kid in the taxi. Also, maybe you won't use a taxi. Don't use a taxi! Don't get innocent working people involved in your illegal shit. That's not fair. Yeah, they're good at they're, taxi drivers. They keep records. That, they're going to turn your ass in. He just wants to collect his fare and go the fuck home. He doesn't want to be involved in your fucking felony. And finally this week, we've learned, people, source your stories. Otherwise... You're going to get innocent people harassed on Twitter because you spread stupid shit all over Facebook. Look, do you ever have your grandma will get a chain email and she'll come to you and she'll swear that, you know, some fucking prince in Nigeria really wants to give her money or some shit? Bill Gates wants to give you $1,000 if this email goes all the way around the world. Yeah. Yeah. You're turning into your grandma. Oh, no. You're the old people who can't internet. You. Exactly. You can't. You're turning. Stop it. Don't be grandma. Don't be grandma. 
I'm told my grandma was a lovely woman. Both yeah. of them. Okay, well, don't be stupid then. That's better. We've apparently learned the mic on my iPad is good. Yes. That's nice. Well, they do build good shit. See, as soon as I got on an Apple product, everything was fine. Well, I, I, windows. I can still hear the, the fan on the, the PC. <laughs> but everything's working. Yes, it's all working. And we learned... Hang on, hang on. Oh, I just covered the camera like a jerk. Hang on. I can show it to you now. I like these. Sad that Mel, your enemy's glitter went down after 24 hours right now, aren't you? 